Okay, we're going to go ahead and start with our uh, produce spotlight series today, all about red peppers, well, that red bell peppers specifically. I have my giant red one today in celebration of them. Uh, so let me share my screen. And today's class is going to be a little bit different because we are going to focus more so on the um, the facts and the nutrition component of red peppers and then some things to pair with them rather than getting into a specific recipe, okay? So if somebody could let me know if you can see my screen, that would be great. Okay, perfect, thank you. So let's start off with some fun facts. Always my favorite thing to do with our produce spotlight. And why are uh, bell peppers considered to be bell peppers? Why do they have those names? Um, and it's because they look like a bell, right? When they were discovered, they felt like they looked like the shape of a bell, hence why they got their name. Um, now, interestingly enough, there are some vegetables that we kind of know this about, that's a little bit more common knowledge, um, like tomatoes nutritionally we consider them a vegetable but botanically we actually um, need to categorize them as a fruit and our peppers fall into that same um, that same category as well like just like tomatoes do so uh, once again they are nutrition profile wise like a vegetable and then um, from a botanical side, they are more like a fruit. I see in chat, to me, red um, bell peppers taste so much better than green. And the reason that that is, is because, hold on guys, I'm still um, letting lots of folks in here. The reason that that is the case is because of um, the next statement that I have here on the slide. And that is that your red, orange, yellow, yellow bell peppers are actually very ripe green peppers. So as they ripen, they do sweeten a little bit. Um, so that's why um, you probably enjoy the taste a little bit better because of that. With that said, do we need to be concerned about that sugar content, that level? No, um, as I keep saying, we do consider these in the nutrition world as a vegetable. So they do not count as a full carbohydrate, despite sweetening up a little bit um, on the vine compared to your green bell peppers, okay? So this next picture here, I just wanna show, um, I just think that the bell peppers are so beautiful, right? Um, we have that typical green, and then today we're specifically talking about the red, but I just love the vibrancy of something like the orange, the yellow, and then purple is a fun one as well. I did not know that purple bell peppers existed until I saw them out of the first market a couple of years ago. And um, if some of you have been around with me long enough through our classes, you know that I love purple foods. So um, I love uh, the, the purple bell pepper just as well, okay? So let's talk further then the main highlight today, the nutrition behind bell peppers, okay? So typically when we think about our immune system and boosting our immune system, we think about vitamin C. Um, why is vitamin C related to our immune health, okay? A lot of times we think about prevention, that vitamin C can prevent a cold or this, that, and whatnot. Um, the research is not very conclusive to that specifically in terms of prevention in the way that we think it is, okay? How we can more so think about vitamin C and our immune health is that vitamin C kind of acts as our body's bodyguard, okay? And what I mean by that is vitamin C helps our cells and our tissues in our body, throughout our whole body, it protects them, okay? So because we have that protection of vitamin C or what I'm calling as our bodyguard, then our body is going to be more so protected against different germs, infections, and things of that nature that can come about. 
So that's how vitamin C can really help our immune system. So when we think about prevention, it is prevention in a way, but it's more so protection. Okay, that's what vitamin C does, take care of our cells and our tissues to give us a greater chance of staying healthy. So how much do we need when it comes to vitamin C? We're looking to do about um, 90 milligrams for males and 75 milligrams for females per day. That is what's considered the daily recommended intake. So when we think about vitamin C, I think a big fruit that we typically lean towards is something like an orange. Our citrus fruits are always hyped up to be very high in vitamin C. And they are, but red bell peppers actually have approximately three times the amount, excuse me, three times the amount of vitamin C as an orange does. Now, the number breakdown is a little hairy, you know, depending on the size of the pepper, the size of the orange, in terms of how much vitamin C really is in each. The most consistent answer that I've been finding is that a um, bell pepper has anywhere between 120 to 150 milligrams of vitamin C for the whole pepper. In comparison, a medium orange has anywhere between like 45 and 51, okay? So that's why I say on average, it's um, about three times as much. So do red bell peppers have the most amount of vitamin C? And actually not really, they're a close second, okay? Um, orange bell peppers actually have the most, followed by red, then yellow, then green. So why do we hype up uh, red bell peppers specifically so much? It's because out of all of the peppers, red bell peppers not only have that huge amount of vitamin C, but they also have a very good chunk of beta carotene. Beta carotene um, translates into vitamin A in our bodies, and vitamin A is extremely essential for our eyes. So if you're like me and you're not a big fan of things like carrots, um, red bell peppers can be a great alternative. So we really like to pump them up because both that vitamin C level and the beta carotene level, but orange does be read out in the way of vitamin C just a little bit um, when it comes to bell peppers. So then the question goes to, well, do we lose any nutrition whenever we cook red bell peppers? Specifically when we're thinking about this vitamin C that we're talking about. Vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin. Okay, and so anytime something is high in water soluble vitamins like vitamin C, then that does mean that whenever you cook them in water, so if you're boiling um, or even steaming sometimes, specifically boiling though, that you can lose some of its nutrient qualities because vitamin C is water soluble. So it's going to leach out into the water a little bit. So, um, with that said, though, okay, here's the catch-22 situation, okay? If you cook a red bell pepper, we're losing a little bit of vitamin C. But if you do cook a red bell pepper, the heat during the cooking process helps to break down that beta carotene. That's really good with the vitamin A and our eye health. So it's like, should I eat it raw so I get more of the vitamin C or should I cook it so I can get more of the beta carotene? Kind of depends on more so what you're looking for. We're not losing a ton of the vitamin C when we're cooking it, um, but we are getting a little bit more beta carotene cooking it. So the suggestion to really maximize all of the nutrition qualities in a bell pepper is to either roast it or saute it. So roast it like you see here in this picture. Um, in the oven, just like, you know, we chat a lot about roasting Brussels sprouts or broccoli or cauliflower. You can do the same with bread bell peppers. Or, you know, I think usually when we see a picture like this and we see that nice char on a red bell pepper, we think that they're always done on the grill. Totally can do it on the grill, that dry heat, um, but can do the same, especially this time of year in the oven. Um, or to saute it. So, Growing um, peppers into a stir fry or cooking 
peppers and onions to put on something like sausage or a cheese steak, something like that, you are going to retain the qualities just a bit. So, um, but if we decide to go full force vitamin C and eat them raw, okay, we're going to chat further about that, okay, because we're still getting that, that great vitamin C aspect, even though we're not getting quite as much as the beta carotene today, we are all talking about the vitamin C in our immune health. So let's talk about prepping a raw pepper, whether it's red or any color, and then different ways and dips to eat it with. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here for a moment. And I have a red bell pepper here. And um, I'm going to show you a little trick in terms of cutting it. Okay, so um, whenever I previously cut a red bell pepper, sometimes I feel like I'm losing a lot of its good qualities here at the top, right? So how can we prevent that from happening? See if I can get, um, there we go. I apologize that it kind of goes in and out of being blurry. If I have my hands in here, then we should be okay. All right, so a little tip is to actually cut off the stem which can be a little <laughs> tricky, okay? But we wanna cut off the stem. So then we have um, a nice um, a nice stable surface here, okay? So there's, get my hands in there again so you can see it. So um, our nice stable surface. And then from there, we're just going to cut down the edges like so. And when we do that, then we're not getting into any of these seeds or the membranes. And instead, hold on, let me get let me get back up here. And instead, we're getting that beautiful quality of what we want from the rounded edges and the rounded bottom. Okay. So, and then from there, you can just go ahead and keep going around. And then we can just slice this in our slices or dice it, you know. So go ahead and slice this down vertically. Oh, I love the smell of peppers. Slice it down vertically and then chop it up if you want. But just a really easy, nice hack instead of, like I said before, I was like cutting down in here and then missing that nice rounded top. Um, all of that. Now, granted, if you're making stuffed peppers, you are going to have to do it that way. So you can twist out the top and scoop out the seeds to put your, um, your goodies, um, in there. But I think just to eat it raw, if you're making a charcuterie board or a nice veggie tray, this is the perfect way to do it. Once again, cutting off the stem and then just cutting straight down along the outside. So then we're not getting into the seeds in the membrane there. Some of you might be like, I've been doing this all along, but for me, this was life changing. Um, and I say that because um, my daughter actually loves bell peppers. Doesn't matter what color it is. Um, I wanna say that she said that maybe red is her favorite, but she likes the orange, yellow. She even likes the green. She's a, a pretty good eater. I've got, I got really lucky, <laughs> lucky in that way. Um, so um, yes, I've, I've cut a lot of uh, red peppers recently, and I think that this is a great way to do it, okay? So I'm going to go back to sharing my screen, and let's talk about um, different things to pair with it if we are going to eat it raw, okay? Because if you find a red pepper on a veggie tray or a charcuterie board, you might be like, well, I need a dipper, right? Um, I think that they are super tasty as they are, but also tasty when you have an accompaniment to it. So first up here, a look at hummus. Um, hummus might not be anything new to you, but if it is, hummus is simply mashed up chickpeas, okay? Um, so a better for you dip in the sense that it's giving us some fiber and it's not giving us some fat, all right? Um, there is going to be, if if you do see the fat content in it, that is going to be all olive oil based. So it's going to be a good heart healthy fat that's in it rather than a fat that we want to avoid. So some typical um, hummus 
um, flavors that are out there are going to be just plain. Previously, one of my favorites was a roasted red pepper hummus. Um, there's, you know, garlic. There's a little bit of everything out here, but I wanted to show you these flavors specifically if you haven't had them before. So the one in the middle is my new favorite, okay? That trend of the everything bagel seasoning, we now have that in hummus. So you can see here in the middle of this picture, you're getting those um, poppy seeds, sesame seeds, you know, the, the other seasonings that come along in it. I see some of you in chat are saying you love the everything, it's delicious. I agree, I think it's amazing and, um, I actually have some in my fridge right now, and I'm going to be placing this up and, and doing some uh, dip in here as soon as class is over. Um, that is a great one to use. On the uh, left-hand side, we also have a pesto hummus. So if you enjoy pesto, which is a mixture of basil and olive oil and pine nuts, then I would highly suggest trying our pesto hummus. Um, you can use it similarly to pesto um, by like stirring it into pasta dishes. I think it's very nice on toast, um, but then it's also great for dipping something like this beautiful red pepper in. And then on the other side, if you're into a little bit of spice or tropical notes, we have a pineapple jalapeno hummus as well, which can be a really fun twist. So, you know, sometimes I think when we hear hummus, we're like, oh, hummus but it has expanded so much with all of these different flavors. So definitely give it a try as a better for you dip on your boards, your veggie trays, or just you know an afternoon snack or uh, a lunch, whatever it might be with your veggies, specifically your red bell peppers. So to get the kids into it a little bit more, I recently made this uh, red bell pepper crab for a media segment, um, which I think I sent out to some of you. It was all about um, immune boosting fruits and vegetables. So I did highlight the red bell pepper for that. And I made this crab. So all you simply do is um, you're just going to be taking your red bell pepper and chopping off the bottom of it. So you can then nestle it into some hummus that I have spread out on a cake stand. You could put it on a plate, whatever it might be. Maybe this is the center of a like beach theme board, which I think would be really cute. So the hummus is tucked in there to look like sand. You put your crab on top. I did some slices to look like the um, legs and the claws. And then I used toothpicks and blueberries to put it, um, the eyes there on top. So once again, a fun way to get the kids engaged with it, you know, they can try the legs and the claws there and the hummus, the sand. And then if they like it, you can take out that um, crab and slice it up so they can dig into it even more. Um, so definitely a fun one to try out with them. Or like I said, this summer, if you're making like a beach theme board, you have a birthday party that's beach themed, this could be a fun thing to put on it, definitely give it a try. And I did make this one with the Everything Bagel um, hummus, as you see their picture that we just talked about because I felt like all the seeds and the little seasoning kind of gave the sand texture like shells um, that you would see on the beach, but you could use any type of hummus you want. Next up in the way of dips, I feel like ranch is of course a big go-to when it comes to a veggie dipper. So my suggestion there to help pat, um, excuse me, to help cut some calories and some fat is to make your own. And I know sometimes you're like, oh, make my own. Like I, that's a lot of work. I just want to grab something. It can still be as simple as grabbing something, right? Just over here on our left, taking our Greek non-fat yogurt. So we're skipping fat. We're adding um, protein by it being Greek yogurt and then include our Nature's Promise Ranch Dip Seasoning Mix. Done, boom, nothing to it, right? So rather than just opening the lid of the dip, you just have to open the lid, put it in a bowl and mix it with our seasoning. And then you're good to go for a better for you ranch. I see, is it possible for in my email to include the photo of the crab? Absolutely, I can definitely include that. 
All right. And then last up here uh, with Better For You Dips, um, a lot of you know that I am a huge fan of the Boathouse Farms dressing, um, but they can also be used as a dip. And the reason I am so big on them is because they are yogurt baked. So you can see right there on the, the front, calorie levels are going to be cut in half, if not more, compared to your typical creamy dressing. They do make this in just regular ranch, um, but uh, in things like Caesar and blue cheese. Um, but I thought these three were uh, especially fun. So I wanted to highlight them. Probably my favorite is the one here on the left, the salsa ranch. I use that for anything and everything. One that a lot of you have probably heard me talk about is combining it any um, crock pot with chicken and fresh salsa and just cooking your chicken in it like that. It's a great little marinade, um, but great for um, a veggie tray as well, the salsa ranch. I have never in the middle tried the lemon basil because it is a newer one, but I love lemon. I love basil. I think that it would be beautiful. I think it sounds great. So um, definitely give that one a try or then for a even more refreshing um, flavor there at the end, the cucumber ranch is also very, very good. Um, so if you haven't tried any of these, I suggest you do so. They are refrigerated because of being yogurt based. So you'll find them in our produce section along the wall where um, the bags of salad are or um, the salsas that are refrigerated there and some other refrigerated dressings. They're in the produce section on the, the greens wall, okay? So definitely check those out if you haven't already as a dip, as a dressing, as a marinade. They're very versatile. And once again, will go great with um, this nice crisp uh, red pepper, okay? So let me stop sharing my screen here. Does anybody have any questions about all of these items or specifically red bell peppers? I hope um, that you guys give these ideas a try. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I will later send out the recording of this video, which I'm gonna go ahead and stop now while I'm thinking about it. 